Hello and welcome to LCS Recap. My name is Ben Forbes and today I'm going to be talking about the European League of Legends Championship Series Super Week. This video script was written with reference to Hype Algerian and Amag's, sorry if I mispronounced your name, article on Leaguepedia, which I have linked in the description. Let's have a look at the standings after week 8, because while North America's league has a clear leader in the form of Cloud9 and Velocity Esports, the obvious underdogs, Europe's skill levels are apparently more consistent. Lemon Dogs are the leaders at the moment with 14 wins to 9 losses, but since Mythi joined, Lemon Dogs have seen 10 wins to just 3 losses. Team Alternate and Fnatic are tied in 2nd place at 13 to 10. Ninjas in Pyjamas are on their own in 4th at 12 to 11, and Evil Geniuses in Gambit Gaming are both 5th place with 11 wins and 12 losses. SK are on their heels at 10 to 13 in 7th, and Meet Your Makers only a little way behind SK are in last place. So as before, I'm going to be talking about what each team needs to take into consideration in Super Week. The regionals are held at Gamescom in Cologne, Germany from the 21st to the 25th of August. The top two teams get automatically sent through to the semi-finals, but the third to sixth place teams inclusive get sent to the playoffs. Starting with Lemon Dogs then, who are sitting in a great position and look to be going from strength to strength with Mithy, their support. They obviously want to retain first place. To do that, they need to beat Fnatic and Alternate and then they're set. Even if they don't manage to take down both teams, they can still obtain first with a few more wins or perhaps try for second place. To get second, they only need to take one game against Fnatic or Alternate, plus one other game out of Ninjas in Pyjamas, Evil Geniuses and Meet Your Makers, something that should easily be obtainable by the team. Elimination is not possible for Lemon Dogs. Even if everything goes south and all their rivals soar above them, their tiebreaker position with SK Gaming is 3-1, to one, so they would automatically be placed into the 6th slot with SK in 7th. Team Alternate, the previous clear winners in Europe until Creighton's 3-week absence are looking to regain control of the circuit, and they need to use the power of Creighton to do that. Ezreal is a highly likely ban against him in many of these games, but he's going to be the driving force behind Alternate's dominance. Alternate lost a lot of ground with White Knight, and they need to hope that Lemon Dogs, and particularly Fnatic, do not outperform them. They need to have a clean sweep this week, or win four and hope Lemon Dogs or Fnatic stumble to get into one of the top two positions. Again though, in a perfect mathematical world, of the one million possible scenarios that could happen, Alternate are eliminated in just under 3,000 of them, so it is very likely that we'll see them in the playoffs in some form. Fnatic, currently tied in second with Alternate, need the opposite to happen. They want to obtain a perfect week to get into that top two position, but because of their previous performances against their matchups for this week, they are 3% less likely than Alternate to take it. But to stay in the playoffs and not get relegated early, they have a number of options, the main two being winning any three games or beating the bottom seeds SK and MYM this week. If it ends up in a draw between Fnatic and Alternate, Xpeke and his team are 3-1 up, so they will take precedence if a second, or even sixth place tiebreaker situation plays out. Ninjas in pyjamas should not aim for the top two, and instead concentrate on finishing in the top six. They need to win four games to guarantee a top six position, or three games as long as one of them is SK. A very important fact here is that Ninjas in Pyjamas are currently hanging in the balance. They are one win from second and one loss from fifth, which is a dangerous situation to be in given the tension is so high. It would probably not be worth risking burning out midweek just to lay their hopes on their current rivals failing, but if they did want to go for a first round buy in the playoffs, they have a 12% chance of doing so. Evil Geniuses are full of ups and downs, but maybe they can use that tactic to their advantage. You never know when Evil Geniuses are going to completely take command of games, and part of that is using their two junglers, Snoopy and Shaka, to work around the enemy playstyles. Shaka's early game and Snoopy's passive farming late game styles change the way EG should be perceived as a team on the fly. EG need to win four games to stay afloat, and if SK lose two and they beat MYM plus two more, they will also stay safe in the running. Oh, and EG need to avoid a tiebreaker with SK whatever they do, because SK are currently 2-2 with EG, and they don't want to throw their lead away on a tiebreaker decision. There was no picture available of the updated roster, so here's a picture of Alex Ish looking slightly deflated. Next, the Russian, and now 1-5th Estonian, Gambit Gaming's revolving door of supports has seen big changes in the group, mostly at their detriment. Slipping to 5th place, they are teetering on the edge of relegation, but to avoid this, they have similar aspirations to Evil Geniuses. 
a great scenario for them would be taking a win from EG and getting one for themselves, so beating EG would be an amazing help to them. Alternatively, winning four games or beating SK, MYM and one more this week will ensure their readiness to compete in the playoffs. And finally, you may have seen in the past few weeks that Darian has been unable to cope with being a bit behind in a lot of his games and ends up repeatedly giving free gold to his opponents due to overextension with no river wards. This needs to stop if Gambit want to stand any chance against their European competitors. SK Gaming are currently in 7th place, and ideally their unmoving team composition and communication skills should be their greatest asset, so they should stay committed to each other as teammates and work out how they're going to overcome the last week of scheduled games. It's a hard week for SK, with Alternate, Gambit and Meet Your Makers having taken two games from them already, but it's on a coin flip. According to Leaguepedia, SK have a 53% chance of being able to contend in the playoffs. Their third option is trying to force a tiebreaker with EG, which they'll want to do in the event of EG putting out a mediocre performance. Under pressure, SK seems to have EG figured out, but what if they throw them a curveball in the form of Shaka? If all else fails, at least SK will be the most handsome team in the league. And finally, Meet Your Makers need to pull out all the stops to clinch the 6th place seed. Winning every game this week is a complete necessity for them. Get Charu on Twisted Fate or something, even though patch 3.10 brings about his new, more selfish passive, as they have a tiny 1.53% chance of making a playoff seed. Much like Velocity though, there is a 1.53% chance. It is possible. Remember the first week when Meet Your Makers went 4 for 1? What if that happened again? They could then get 7th place and pick their challenger opponent in the Spring Promotion Tournament. But there'll be more on that closer to the date. Suffice to say, Meet Your Makers are in dire straits, and not in the Sultans of Swing sort of way. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Stay tuned to LCS Recap for highlights and commentary from all of the games. Pitchers property of Riot Games and the team logos are property of their respective organizations. Most of the information in this video was figured out by Hype Algerian and Amags, again, sorry if I mispronounced your name, on Leaguepedia, and I've linked the article in the description. My name is Ben Forbes, and you can find the rest of the Week 8 North American and European games on the left side of your screen, or check out LCS Recap on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching.